The International Trade Commission issuing an order Thursday that could potentially ban the import of Apple Watches over a patent dispute with healthcare tech company Massimo. Shares of Massimo spiking on that news last night. Massimo accuses Apple of violating its patents for features like the oxygen reader on the Apple Watch. This now goes to the Biden administration, which has 60 days to decide whether to institute the ban. Apple, meanwhile, saying in a statement in part, Massimo has wrongly attempted to use the ITC to keep a potentially life-saving product for millions of U.S. consumers while making way for their own watch that copies Apple. Apple says it will appeal this ruling as well. Joining us now in an exclusive interview is Massimo founder, chairman, and CEO Joe Chiani. Joe, uh, good to see you. You and I were just talking about this a few weeks ago. You got this win. Um, are you copying the Apple Watch with your Android <laughs> watch coming? John, great to see you again. That statement you read was so loaded and so outrageous. As you know from the last interview, we've been working on pulse oximetry since 1989. Apple contacted us in 2013, right after we announced the first consumer pulse oximetry product that worked on the iPhone and told us we're the platinum of non-invasive monitoring. They'll sign our NDA, they'll work with us. So what do they do instead? They recruited 25 of my team. I didn't take any of their people. Uh, they copied us, they copied us poorly. The second thing they say in that statement, somehow it's gonna affect the health of people. They know their pulse oximetry is not good. I saw the data in the trade secret trial where they knew it wasn't good enough to submit it for FDA approval. They knew that their product would only read two measurements a day on 37% of the people. Yet, as they put in their own document, because of chaos of COVID, if we launch SPO2 with our watch, we'll pick up market share from Fitbit. Hmm. So for them to say this is somehow going to hurt consumers, no, it actually will help consumers because that product, we did a test, it missed 94% of life-saving events. Okay, but at, at the same time, you, you started in hospitals and you're trying to push into consumer electronics where Apple rules, and it's not just with watches, you also bought a, a company that does home audio. What are you up to? Well, first of all, in the ITC, in the trade secret case, we showed the jury that I had this idea of creating a watch since 1991. We've been working on it since diligently since 2015, 2016, when we shrank the power consumption of our product and the size of it so it could fit in a watch. So yeah, since the beginning I was trying to do this, but at the same time, a lot of things have come forward that makes it possible, like high-speed internet, like Bluetooth and all these new technologies, cloud, uh, data sharing and data gathering. So, yeah, I mean, they called us, they wanted our technology, and now we're copying them. It's kind of not not legitimate. Joe, it's Morgan. Um, Apple's already said it's going to appeal. How is this going to play out? What would What would feel like a fair result to you, given the fact that there is quite an array of, at least from an analyst standpoint, of consequences in terms of how or resolutions in terms of how this could go well look as a patent owner as an inventor on about 500 patents what we all want is for a period of time 10 20 years max is exclusivity on our invention so an injunction is our right and i hope an injunction will go in place now that doesn't mean i don't want to help and make sure consumers get pulse oximetry and we were willing to work with Apple in 2013, despite everything they've done, if we can make their product better, or they could use even our technology, I'm happy to work with Apple, because they have a huge footprint, and I want everyone to have a Pulse Ox that really works. So you're saying you're not looking to take Pulse Oximetry out of the Apple Watch necessarily, despite the fact that you're coming out with a watch, you think there's a, a world in which there's a deal done where Apple pays you for your intellectual property? Yes, uh, it's not just about the money. I want pulse oximeters that really work. If you are taking opioids at home and you're about to get opioid-induced respiratory depression, you need a continuous pulse ox that alerts you and your loved ones for it. So yeah, if we can work with Apple to either make their technology really work, 
which it doesn't, despite taking my team, taking our IP, or use our technology, I am willing to do it. There's room for everybody. So realizing that there are a variety of timelines for how this could play out based on possible solutions, how do you plan for the business, not only over the near term, but over the medium and long term, knowing that there could be a legal situation that's hanging over your head? Well, we, first of all, believe ultimately what we're trying to do is improve people's lives. And we do that through our technology and our products. And we have a product right here <laughs> that works really well that I'm eager to get to many, many people. Uh, we're also happy to work with other watch companies from luxury watches to smart watches to get our technology out there. And that includes Apple. So we'll continue running our business we will continue to defend our intellectual property. And we think the best thing for Massimo, consumers, and other smaller companies is this injunction. Because at the end of the day, Apple has thought for a while that it's more efficient to infringe than to work with other companies. And only, only a block will make them rethink that since they have more money than anyone. And money is not what moves them when it comes to settling these kinds of things. All right. Once again, Apple is fighting this. We'll see where it leads. Joe Chiani, uh, founder and CEO of Massimo, thank you. Thanks for having me.